I want to talk to you uh, for a moment about writing for the web. Your website is um, a great tool to get out information, to display information to parents and um, students and to the public about the great things that are going on in your school. It's also a great place, um, almost like a repository for parents to locate information um, about your school. They can do certain tasks. Um, there, there's ways where a parent can actually use your website where they won't even need to call to actually speak to someone. So that'll be a little easier for you know the office staff, I'm sure. But I'm going to talk to you about how to actually set up your website so that it's actually a tool and not just a, something for display. So our first question, what do you want your website to do? When you sit down to edit your website, if you are a webmaster, if you're not and you're someone who will act as kind of the middle person between the webmaster and the community, the first thing that you want to know is what do you want your website to do? Do you want it to present information? Do you want it to just display all the great things that you guys are doing, all of the um, activities and programs that you have? What exactly would you like your website to do? So once you think of that question and you can answer that question for yourself, then you'll have an idea of how you want to gear your website, how you want to design it to present it to the public. Um, who is your audience? Think about it. Who, who's going to be visiting your website the most? Will it be parents? Will it be students or the community? If you believe that your website is more student, um, like students visit it more, do you have information for homework help? or information on how to um, access different websites that could assist them once they get home. Um, these are things that you kind of want to think about. If you think that your parents are visiting more, what are they looking for? So these are things that you, you really want to consider. What requests do you receive the most? What are the calls that are coming in about? Are people asking about delays and closings, um, school procedures? Are they asking about PTA information? Well, we'll take a poll. What are you got? What are some of the questions that um, that you all are receiving? Does anyone have any any questions that they can think of on the top of their head, like that parents are asking for that isn't on your website right now? Yes. Um, like a school events for that particular day. Yes. Yes. Field trips. Yeah. That's good. Now, this information, since you know that this is something that they're asking for, this is something that you can display. Even if it's not on your front page, you can kind of lead them into it. Um, check out the great things, you know, the great places that we're visiting. And just have a link there so that they can click on that and see different pictures of some of the field trips that you've been on for the year. You could even do a collage. Just kind of keep in mind the things that um, people are asking about. If you're getting calls about, um, you know, the PTA organization, how do you sign up? Maybe you need to put a page on your website for the PTA or even put a link somewhere, you know, the PTA is open for enrollment. Anything like that that'll kind of answer the questions before they reach your school. Um, do people even visit your website? When you mention your website, do you get like a blank stare from people? Or are people like, oh, yes, you know, I just checked that out. Kind of think about those things. You want people to actually visit your website so that all the information that they need is right at their fingertips. Um, is your site task oriented? Can a parent go to your website and find out the types of programs that your school offers? Can they go to the website and um, learn about the school improvement plan or how you guys are you know, building the school? How, how, what are you doing to improve the school? And how can you make the most important task easier for your visitors to do? Is certain information buried in the page? Does a parent have to go to your website and then click to 12 different links to find out your opening and closing procedures? How many clicks does it take to get to the uh, bus information? Things like that you want to kind of keep at the top of your mind um, when you're designing your website or even when you're giving information to the, um, the person who will be posting information on your website. Just so that parents have an idea of what this school is about, what they're presenting, and what great things are they doing. Okay, how to write for the web. You want to write in plain language. 
I know it's very easy for us to kind of discuss certain terms and you know we all know what avid means and we all know what different jargon means and things like that but you have to keep in mind that a parent from outside they're not going to know they're going to wonder what avid really is I mean some parents may even wonder what ROTC is how would you know that if your if your profession is an accountant and you're somewhere else and you're just hearing your child tell you that they're, they're interested in the program. You have no idea what it means. So kind of keep in, keep in mind, think of, put yourself in the parent's shoes sometimes and think about the things that you, know, you would want to, to display to the parent and explain to them. Um, if you use an acronym, we kind of went through that, kind of explain it. So if you have HSA, make sure that you put HSA in parentheses and actually spell it out so everyone knows what that means. And then you could even give a little teaser, even if it's just a one sentence description of what that exam is. Just something to kind of add a little more information. So even when you're putting information on the website, ask yourself, is this enough? Will this, is this just enough information to like utterly confuse someone? Or is this enough information to to just nail it so that they understand what's going on and they can make a decision on what to do next. So really just keep that in mind. Use trigger words. Instead of supplemental educational services, free tutoring. Everyone knows what free means. Think about those kind of things. You don't want to um, confuse someone. You want to make sure that the parent is able to understand what they're reading because if they don't understand, they're gonna pick up the phone or they're not going to make a decision. And your, the student could actually lose out on something that could be great for them. So really think about that. Um, divide your text into chunks. Keep in mind how you surf the web. When you go online, are you just reading every, everything word for word, or are you looking for something? If you don't find what you're looking for, what do you do? You click off of that website, and you go to what you can find, right? So you don't want parents to go to your website and go and just hit X and go to something else to find the information. You want them to be able to land on your web page and find what they need. That's the purpose of your website. Um, use bullet points. You want to make sure that people are not reading an entire book on a website. Break it down. Make it clear and concise so that when people look at it, you're finding the information that you need right there. You don't have to read you know, three or four paragraphs before you find out how do I register my child for this special service. Put the most important words first. Make sure that the information that someone wants to see is right there at their fingertips. If not, they will click off. If you really think about it, you only spend a certain amount of seconds on a web page each time you're visiting a website. Like test yourself. If you're looking for, let's say, you're going on a vacation and you're looking for a flight somewhere. You don't care about American Airlines mission statement and all of that. You're just looking to find out how can I search for this flight. So kind of keep that in mind when you're designing your website. Put the information out there first so that no one has to search through your whole website to find out. No extra long pages, no one will read them. Generally, people only read what's right there in that square. No one's going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of your web page to find out how to register for a class or how to you know, get their student enrolled in your school. So have that information right at the front. Make sure that it's clear and that people can understand it. 